So let me know when you're ready. Okay. So this is Josh Stefak, and he's going to be talking today about biomechatronics. Thank you, Hannah, and thank you all for being able to attend today. So this term likely looks alien to a lot of you, which is probably good because it's a very science fiction-y term. And that's where you're going to find a lot of examples of this. I've got three of them for you. And they are Iron Man, the Terminator, and then Otto Octavius. So these are all very good examples that you may not recognize as sorts of biomechatronics. Now, in this presentation, I hope to cover the definition of the term, uh, current and future examples of it, as well as the pros and cons. Now, to get things just started, what does biomechatronics mean? Well, the term is the applied science that integrates mechanical elements, electronic parts, and then biological organisms. This is for the purpose of eliminating human deficiencies or being able to enhance our abilities further than it would normally be possible. Now, while the term biomechatronics is rather long, when you see it in terms of just products, you'll see it more in the uh, term bionics. Or if you're looking at it in literature, you might see the term cyberpunk, such as this image here. Now, in order to start talking about and one of the deficiencies that could be eliminated, as well as one of the possible uh, uses for biomechatronics, I'd like you all to imagine this scenario for me. A few years ago, you lost one of your legs in an accident. Those ghost pains are still there every now and then, but for the most part, you're used to not having it anymore. You've heard about this new bionic limb that you can get, and have paid to get it. And now you're just testing it out. So you're able to now stand on two feet. And they ask you to wiggle your toes, and you can do so. And when you're walking, you can feel it moving just like your other foot is, feeling the weight that it pushes against the ground, as well as it supporting you. These are sensations that you haven't had in years. This is just one of the possible uses along with just arms and then other, your next generation of prosthetics. We've also got this upcoming use of military exoskeletons. The picture here is a suit called the XOS, which in a test was able, the wearer was able to lift 200 pounds while only feeling the exertion of lifting 10. We've also made starting to make a lot of steps in the terms of bionic senses. Uh, in May, Popular Science as well as Science Today published an article where a group from Princeton University was able, with the help of a high school student, to produce a bionic ear that actually hears better than ours can now. It's not just a replacement, this would actually serve as a fully functional ear, not just sort of a hearing aid. Now, as current, these are all prototypes. We're still actually quite a few years off from seeing any of these on the market. I'm going to pause here because from here on out in my presentation, I'm going to be talking about things in the future sense. And things can get pretty out of control pretty quick. So let's now imagine a society where the lines between man and machine don't exist anymore. Everything is fully integrated. Now, in this sort of society, it is theoretical that you could replace almost any part of your internal or external being with something mechanic. <coughs> you could literally become a full-on cyborg, or if not, just completely artificial. Now, that being said, you have now the ability to not just have your own body, as Doc Ock showed us. It can be quite useful to have four extra limbs, mind you. <laughs> Hopefully they aren't ones with artificial intelligences that drive you crazy. So you can have extra arms. You could 
theoretically, feel what it's like to have a tail or give yourself a water filtration system that allows you to breathe underwater. The possibilities are nearly endless for what we could do. On top of that, you can actually theoretically link your mind to the internet. In Matthew Anderson's book <clears throat> called Feed, the feed is something that everyone has uh, surgically planted into them after birth. And what the feed does is it is constantly linked and monitors you, what you do, Hi, Bob. Hi. what you do, who you interact with, and the sorts of things that you like. And then it produces a list based on the, what it sees, and then advertises certain products that it thinks you might like to buy. Constantly. When you go into a mall, it'll just be like, oh, stop over in this store. They have this certain product that, well, you saw that you liked skateboarding, so they've got this new board that's just absolutely fantastic for you. So it's pretty easy to see that there can be a lot of pros and cons with going into a society where there is no line between man and machine. On the positive side, we have the ability to compensate for any physical deficiency that humans can have, regardless of extent, be it injury, a birth defect, or something caused by illness. On top of this, we also have the ability for servicemen and military to benefit from exoskeletons. Take the example of a fireman needs to move a heavy door very quickly in the midst of a heavy fire in order to save a civilian. An exoskeleton can help them move this door with very little physical exertion so that it can get into the room really fast and then save that person. On top of this, with our enhanced immune systems, we'd have a lot longer lifespan, and due to that, people would be able to stay in the workforce longer, and this would stimulate the economy. Moving towards the con side of things, things get a little bit controversial. When you can theoretically become your idea of perfection by replacing any physical flaw that you can see in yourself, why wouldn't you? This would go sort of along the terms of plastic surgery, except this goes to a lot further extent. Because it's not just your outside looks that you find wrong with yourself. This also covers all of the internal parts. Maybe you don't like the way your hips move when you walk. Well, you can fix that. On top of that, you also have really big backlash against augmentation. And this would come mostly in the form of religion. It would be blasphemous, probably, to change your body into that that is artificial. You are playing God in the sense that you are no longer using the body that was given to you at birth. On top of this, criminals gain a few new tricks. It now becomes a lot easier to be able to hide certain things in your body, such as weapons, uh, illegal substances. On top of this, with integrating our minds into the internet. The brain is considered one of the best computers that we have available. So what's going to keep hackers from trying to literally hack into our minds and gain control of our body? Now, there's no guarantee that the future will take this path. Uh, it's always variable. But I really hope that I've been able to start turning your gears in the minds whether they be figurative or literal, towards some of the steps that the future could take and what it would mean. So let's go back and recap. I've given you the definition that biomechatronics is the integration of man and machine for the benefit of extending our life and just being able to compensate for almost any deficiency possible. It's a slowly advancing field, so we're quite a few years off of actually seeing where things are going to start be going. And finally, if once things start going in that direction, there are quite a few positives and negatives to consider <coughs> once society actually starts going into these things. Thank you all for listening. <laughs>